Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to a uh, live stream. Uh, tonight, um, I thought I would actually get myself a guest for the channel. Haven't had a guest on the channel for quite a while. Um, I'll say a few hellos as well. Uh, but tonight, I thought, as you can see from the title, I've got a guest with me who's going to be Tommy Bernard. And we're going to hopefully have a little chat about eBay, have a little chat about vintage electronics, um, just just get back into it because recently he picked up this pretty amazing haul, which I'm going to let him get into when he arrives. Uh, he's running a little bit late, so I thought I would still start the stream and say a few highs, and then once he's in, then we can continue with the chat um, and introduce some of you guys who might not know who he is um, to you, and obviously then talk about the haul that he's picked up and some of the cool items that he has recently sold from it. Um, it's something that I used to do a fair bit of, but I haven't done recently and it kind of watching some of the stuff he picked up kind of uh, intrigued me again and kind of reinvigorated me to look for some electronics again because it's been something that I've not done for quite a while. Um, so I'll say a few hellos. Thank you for everyone that has popped in. Uh, there are currently over 50 people watching, which is fantastic. Uh, we've got Shazad in the chat as well. Um, who's the first put name that I can see, LGG, Lord Ahab, uh, Fix It For Reselling, The Vinegar Jar, um, aka Peter Cummins has joined us. I believe The Vinegar Jar put his first video out on YouTube uh, today. So if you want, you can always go and check him out as well. He normally does a bit of Instagram. He's actually a pro Fortnite player turned YouTuber. Um, we've got Money Mental Andrew in the chat, Buckle Y, Double Karma, Fix it for reselling. All sellers say electronics are fully working. Then when you get home, most of them don't work. Yeah, that's something I suppose we can touch upon. Um, it's definitely something you have to, it's one of the pitfalls, but you have to take that into account when you're obviously making your offers. Um, but yeah, uh, Pleasant Valley is popped in. Hi, Pleasant Valley. Uh, Thrift Beast CQ, uh, Uniquely Me Tracy is popped in. Sue Curiosity Inc. as well. Uh, thanks for popping in. Um, Pleasant Valley says, I bet Z will be getting back to sourcing electronics again. Perhaps um, Money Mental says, I bet Tommy is late. Um, yes, in in this case, you're right. Um, the Vinegar Jar piece says, I have so many broken electronics. And Michelle Lathan's popped in, Just Me, Gloria One, uh, Bargain Shopping. Um, yes, you did call it Flipping Particles D, Fritz. Uh, thank you for popping in, guys. Appreciate it. Um, John at YLM, wow, living the dream, Richard Payne, um, <laughs> Icon Retro, uh, Salty Dog, John, um, hi, Beck is actually relaxing, I think she's watching, well, she was watching TV, um, so yeah, um, I'm the Legends popped in as well, hi, yeah. um, question, says Paul Calver, I do electronics, just wondering, how do you test amps, um, good question, I can talk about that, um, whilst we wait, um, Amps, um, I think, are not the most difficult thing to test um, if you're talking about stereo amps. Um, firstly, like, make sure that when you're looking at what kind of amp you're buying, uh, it does pay to know roughly what you're looking at. If you're looking at a stereo amp, it's going to be a lot simpler to test um, in terms of all its inputs and outputs than a AV amp, for example, because if you're looking at an AV amp, they also have HDMI outputs. Lord Ahab makes a good point. You can use a multimeter on all the, um, you know, on all the outputs and see whether you're getting signal go through. But with things like AV amps, um, they've some, you know, a lot of them for quite a few years have had on-screen displays on them, so they're a bit more involved. They'll have either a composite video out if they're really old. They may have S video out and they may have like you know like hdmi out etc so you've got to be willing to test those out and and in terms of stereo amps you're only really going to have the a couple of inputs i normally keep like a cd player and just switch between the inputs and then have a pair of speakers i can test the outputs on um so yeah i'll do that um that's what i would do when testing amps um let me just introduce tommy to you guys here he is the man the myth the legend what is Hi, up? Tommy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for joining us. I gotta be um, like Andrew. Hello, UK. The yeah. greatest American reseller in the world is here. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, this guy is Tommy Bernard. A really fun guy. Uh, does a lot of live streaming. 
Um, he does a lot of live streaming with Tracy uniquely me that's in the chat. So if you haven't already, I have, uh, if you haven't already go and subscribe to him, I have actually put his link in the description uh, below the stream. So you can just click on that and it will take you to his channel. Um, but I brought Tommy on because obviously I've been talking to him, got to know him. He's a good guy, but also he's got a few similarities in terms of what he's interested in. He's got quite a, a penchant for like hi-fi electronics computers more computers i would say than hi-fi right yeah i thought you were going to talk about our zero sales uh no we no we're, gonna, we're, we're not we're going to talk a bit <laughs> about we're going to get let the people get to know yourself uh you know how, who you are you can tell us a bit of, of your journey as well but we want to mainly talk about like the hall you know yeah. about i've been i've talked to you about this hall ages ago i know and so i just wanted to kind of it's pretty crazy but introduce yourself go on introduce yourself. well my name is tommy and i'm uh tracy uniquely me's pimp uh in america uh <laughs> i pimp her out on weeknights for sub sub subscribers right yeah uh, <laughs> but what's, what's your part-time job <laughs> that's your full-time job yeah. right so. and um uh, currently, I'm in a debacle where I'm trying to decide whether to go into reselling, but eBay's making that very difficult right now. Um, I've taken leave to test the waters twice. Like I did it, like you can do it like once per year in the United States. You can take like family medical leave uh, for like last year. I had a baby, so you could take 12 weeks off and um, unpaid, so you can test if you can sustain your bills, right? Um, so that's kind of a nice way to do it. And it last year was brilliant. I was like, Psh, this is no. You know nothing. No brainer. Yep. And all the so way just through. To, just to stop you there, just to clarify. So, Tommy, you you work for UPS, right? Yep. UPS. Um, so driver. last year, what you're saying is you took time out of mm -hmm. that to test mm -hmm. the waters of reselling, and it was a yep. super success. I took but, like from July through November first, or roughly right around there, um, when they told me they needed me to come back, regardless, because it was Christmas time here. So UPS gets you know mad with it because they're Amazon's. Uh, foremost carrier in the states so um they you know just get ridiculous amazon runs the world over here they literally dictate when we work when the postal service works when everyone works in the in the package handling industry mm. and so, so this time you tried again and i said you know all the way up until like uh may may of the i think it was around may this year i had brilliant my sales were just on fire the best ever and I was like, all right, this is a no brainer. I'm, I'm done. Like I'm done. So I, but I, I realized that I could take another leave just to be sure and give myself a 12 week buffer. So I did the same thing. I had to wait till July, but I used all my vacation in between and took days off because the way UPS works, it's all around seniority. We have unions over here. I don't know if you have, I don't think you have those in the, not that much. No. no. Um, so everything goes by seniority. So if there's extra drivers in seniority order, we can go home, take the day off unpaid, you know, just a free day unpaid. And, um, I would, so I took advantage of everything I could to make it through till July. And, you know, I'm lucky I did because it seemed like not long after that, like maybe August it, or end of July, eBay just started to hemorrhage. I mean, I could just see it. And, you know, like I was spending just hours with analytics and, just thinking it's me it's me it's me my you know all my everything that i thought i knew was wrong and then finally tracy and i decided to come online and do something a little bit different start our show and i started to meet a lot of people from around the world you um a lot of amazing people you guys in the uk um australians and i come to realize it wasn't just me and it wasn't just, it's everybody, it was worldwide. And we get a really bad picture in the United States because most YouTubers here have loyal followers. Their, their sales don't really slow down because they have so many sales from followers, the bigger guys, you know? So you don't really get a good gauge here. It's nice to talk to normal people that don't have a big following that you can really get a real feel for what's going on. And like we did with Brad, you saw Brad's interview. He said he was down 70%. And I've been verified with Brad. I know what Brad sales have been. They've been just ridiculous. Can you imagine quitting your job and being down 70%? Yeah, I can actually. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you're <laughs> the last person I should ask that to, I yeah. guess, right? I mean, I mean, the thing is, yeah, I mean, it has been a bit haywire. Mm -hmm. um, but what I want to kind of steer you back towards, because I can tell you're passionate about this and we can have a good old chat about mm -hmm. that. But what I want to talk about definitely and hopefully will help, hopefully help some people. And it's kind of interesting, really, is when you're feeling positive and you've got this haul. 
I'm going to talk yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so for those of you that don't know, um, Tommy is into his tech as well. So mm-hmm. we've I, not just to draw a line, Andrea. I can understand why you're talking about sales, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are talking about sales. Mm-hmm. Sales have been bad. Oh, by the way, thank you, Tracy, for this super chat. Um, Where's well. my half? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be on your channel. Um, so I understand sales have been like you know pretty pretty bad for a lot of people. They've been up and down for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But the positive side of it is is if you have noticed that with certain items, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And if that's you what find the right about. item, there's always if a collector. Find, yeah, it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. Um, and it's like George you know, Ross. Like George Ross. He probably hasn't suffered nearly as bad as some of us because he's got a very focused, small niche that he's in or niche, however you say it over there. I'm not sure. Yeah. And no, but like you did also find something which oh, yeah. is pretty good. I mean, do you want to just talk yeah. us through roughly introduce well, us? To if you about, want, I can go back to the beginning. Um, yeah. I, 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 my first side hustle for, I hate the hustle word, but that is what everyone uses. I, I built custom gaming computers and yeah. um i at the age of like 13 my dad paid someone to teach me how to work on fixed computers back when it was dos windows 3 1 stuff like that so i had i became when i i mean i still remember the first thing i did on the when i got my first aol disc when i got online i downloaded a dave matthews band song that was the very first thing i did in pictures of like it was like amazing that you could do this right real it was like real media do you remember that like um, real media, like it was like real small. Yeah, I remember real and media, the blue software. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god! So that was the first thing I did, and right then and there, when I found the internet, I was hooked, like just hooked. So it's always been that. And then I found online gaming a few years later, and, and we came around playing, around like it. Rainbow Six. <laughs> like, have you ever heard of that? Like Rogue Spear. Yeah, Rainbow, Rainbow Six. Six. Yeah, yeah. We played tournaments. We played. I had. We didn't have high speed internet here. I had two DSL modems like linked together to get. It was like a thousand dollars a month to get that. <laughs> it was re- to play video games, dude. And oh man, it was ridiculous. So I was hooked. I just knew that was my like passion at the time. So, so fast forward all these years to yeah, reselling. Reselling. I went into what I knew, video games. Right. Yeah. I, the first thing I sold, like that, I remember selling of mine was a World of Warcraft collector's. Ad- well, I sold a couple iPhones. So don't let me lie. I sold some iPhones. They, but my first passionate item was a World of Warcraft collector's edition. Um, game and i if i remember it was like sold for like 2000 2000 i think or 2500 maybe and they go and i that was just me like taking it quick and getting out because there's people that hold out for four grand for yeah. the very first one the very first so you're talking about well so one of your first kind of um high value flips in terms of the yes world of, yeah the world of geekery and tech and yeah stuff like that is was it a sealed box of the original no here, there was a trick you could do you could take yours and you could call in to Blizzard at the time and tell them you lost your CD key and they would send you another one. And you could sell it as an open box, new key. Oh, okay. So <laughs> lo and behold, and everyone was looking for these things so everywhere. They still sold for over 2,500. What's that? What are they? You said someone said they're still over 2,500? No, so oh, you said, yeah, open you, box. Yeah, still yeah. like it was like two yeah. grand or 2,500. Um, and then um, that was like a year before I like, I just one day remember when I had the baby that I, I, I have an older daughter that's 13. I missed everything at UPS. UPS hours are crazy. And I was like, I want, I don't want to do this again. I want to, I don't want to miss Christmas plays. I don't want to miss, you know, after school activities. So I got to find something. And I remember like the world of Warcraft thing popped up and I'm like, damn. So I started scouring, you know, everything that to find, well, lo and behold, I found like um, two people within like two months selling out. One guy was selling the remnants of a video game store. And the other guy was selling out his video game collection. So this one guy must have needed money really bad because I bought out uh, two carload truckloads of video game stuff for $200. Wow. I mean, and I still have 100 let's just, repeat, let's just repeat that quickly. I, I, while I've stopped you there, a um, lot of Josh has super chat $5 as well. Thank you so much. He says the hustle <laughs> was sold separately. Always knew Tommy had a little bit of hustle. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, so you bought... Yeah, um, it was it was like the remnants of what he game straw, like the remnants. So he yeah, like like Genesis. everything that wasn't fast moving that he did, yeah. like like say like GameCube or you know it mm-hmm. was Sega Genesis, Xbox, original Xbox, three sixties. But it but it literally was two truck like regular truck, not you know like we have those flatbed you know hillbilly yeah. trucks here. Yeah, it was two of those filled and a car filled. 
there was hundreds of games. Two, yeah, he needed money to fix a car. And I was the first one to message him. It was like 1130. Where, where was this deal that you found? Where was this? On Facebook? Or Facebook something? Marketplace, yeah. And wow. then um, it was uh, that just hooked me right there. I mean, because it was paid for within probably several hours, you know. I mean, well, as long as it took me to get 20 listings up, probably four days, probably, you know, like with eBay. Um, so that was hooked. That was it. I was like, all right, this is it. I can, you, at that point, you think you're unstoppable, right? You're just like, okay, yeah. this is, you could, this, if I found this one this easy, they're all that easy, right? Yeah. That's how it feels. But we know, we know now, yeah. right? <laughs> like right. your RC parts, right? You did the same. Exactly. Kind of... Yeah. It hasn't happened again. No. And, and I found well, one similar, but, but way but you, smaller. but you came across but saying that what about this deal that you came across, um, recently with the vintage, this was a this is the finally we're getting you <laughs> we're, like, here's been bugging me about <laughs> yeah i'm trying to rein you in tommy i'm sorry yeah, try, right, try. let me get to it so <laughs> this, flea market one know, this is what i want to get to this is what i want to get to the vintage retro electronics so okay. you say that you haven't been able to get great deals in a row but you've just told us you got a video game clear out for 200 dollars from facebook yeah Market. yeah and then how did you come across after that this, and then this electronics deal this one, and then this one, yeah. This was a this was the remnants of a 1980s. Uh, it looks to be early 90s computer store. Um, and what happened was I went to the flea market, which I I I only go here when I'm like just bored because there's really nothing there ever. And this guy's been selling uh, military forever there. I've known I've seen him walk past him, but never seen. Well, I just happened to look down on a table, and he had a um like a vintage uh, DOS big box game called, uh, I think it's called Time Bandits. I think okay. it's still listed. I haven't sold it yet, but there's watchers on it. Um, he $2 is what he wanted for it. I didn't even price it. I just picked it up because I would just keep it for collection. Sure. Sure. So, and I went to pay for it. And he said, oh, you like this kind of stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I collect all. And he said, look out the back door. And I looked out the back door and I have pictures of it and everything. There was a, he had a trailer behind his truck with the trailer lid down and it was just filled front to back with computer stuff. And it was like, and I can't even tell you how much was in there. So I just started quickly going through it. I said, you know, my heart started racing. You know, I'm looking around for people coming, you know, like, yeah, yeah, shut yeah. me in here. Leave me in here, you know. Like, so, hold, so hold on, just to recap. So this guy normally just sells military. Yeah? Just military. And most people are just going to walk past. They're going to scan, see that it's military, and just walk right on by. Yep. You managed to pick out some. Just happened right on the corner, like in a really good spot that I happened to catch it when I'm coming around yeah. the corner. Like it, it was just a stat. It wasn't like a, but it wasn't like a home run big box game. It was just no, no, no. no it probably, I don't even know. You're generally passionate about that era of electronics and tech. Yeah, just even my. It, was, it could have been worth like five dollars. I don't still, care. Yeah. yeah, I would have just put it on my shelf as yeah. a collector's piece. You know what I mean? Because there will be someone like that. Lemmings, I, the game. You know, not worth a lot, but I would have still picked it up just for the the era. Sure. So he showed me everything in there, and I was like, I I'll take it all. You know, like how? What do we? Because at this price is, I was like, I'll just, I'll probably take it all from you. What are you wanting for it? And he's like, this stuff's no use to me. He's like, and he said, and I have twenty times more of this, like twenty times easily of this. I was like, well, so I just looked down. And I saw all these sealed old games that I was showing you about, right? Yeah, I said, well, let me take these right now because I didn't want them to disappear. <laughs> just, let me just play those off your hands. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, you know, like a little box of like DOS three and a half inch shareware discs of the most popular games of the time, which was Doom, Blake Stone, like, you know, stuff like that. And a lot of people don't even realize that shareware sells tremendously because it's even more rare than the big box. The boxes are rare, but the discs are more rare on the share rare on the shareware. So the boxes on the big box are more rare. Because people lose them, damage them, you know, stuff like that. So I bought the, everything that day for five dollars, like everything oh, that God. day. And he didn't want it. Then I looked down, and there was stacks of Playboys from the '60s, like you know, all, and I see Marilyn Monroe and all this. I'm like, oh, there's money because Playboys sell. Yeah. So you. They, bought, like, uh, how much volume of stock are we talking for? Five. Like, I, I mean, if, if I go back show you, get more because I, I, I don't know if you've gotten some th tabs ready or not at all. Um. Yeah, I can. I can show you some. I. I haven't sold very much. Like honestly, because I've been trying to make my punish myself to sell my death pile. No, I'm thinking more of like, for example, that keyboard sale that you. Showed. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, was um, that within that five dollars, or did you? Yeah, go no, no, that was within the next. Like when I went to his house, like a ah, week okay, later, so, yeah. and bought everything. So you um, made that initial connection, and you bought some stuff off him at the flea market, and then you arranged to go back. Yes, and I I only went in one garage, and I, 
I offered him, he said, I don't even know how much, um, how much I should, you know, ask for it. And he said, why don't you just make me an offer? And I was just look him in a hole. And you know how that goes. You've seen that with Lonnie a million times, right? You don't know. Yeah. That's a, that's a nerve wracking, like, like thing. So I, um, I just shot out 500, 500. Yeah. Um, and he was like, really? <laughs> he was like, he was shy. I could tell he didn't want, he didn't know. And I, I wanted to be a little high cause I didn't want to under getting pissed off. Cause he, cause he told me before he had five times more of this. Hmm. And then he, I think he thought, and he was like, well, let me, he's trying to run me up again. He was like, let me go in and talk to my dad. Cause dad was getting ready to pass away, but I, his dad didn't care. And I knew that he already told me his dad didn't care. So he come back in and he said, oh yeah, we'll take it. My dad said 600, but you know, I told him that blah, 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 blah. I was like, all right, deal. So I went and rented a truck and, and took five trips and I got shelving and, I mean, I can't even tell you. A motherboard, brand new, new old stock motherboards, IBM, if like you Apple. Don't mind, if you don't mind, if it's not too difficult, if you can get a couple of tabs up, we can share yeah, them yeah, if it's yeah. all right with the stream because it yeah. just shows like these gems are still out there. And yeah, let me find most the key. People would, most people would completely not even pay much attention to this well, stuff. And the thing about it is what I found doing the research because I thought kind of old, all clicky keyboards were, were, were worth a ton, but they're not. And... Yeah. I had like eight of them, I think, out of that um, deal, if I can recall. And I sold, let's see, I've sold. All right. So, are you going to be able to add it? Yep, here it is. I, I'm going to pull this up and, and I can add it to I'm the gonna, stream. Then yeah, I want to try. I want to pull the listing up though, so you yeah. can, because yeah, that's, the list, the, yeah. I hate going, solds are, they make it so <laughs> ridiculous. So, all right. So here it is. Um, and I just don't want to show the buyer's name. Let me cut that. No, of course. Yeah. 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 All right. So I got it up. So here is, so this was the first thing I listed cause I did some quick comps. Okay. Let me just and add it to the stream. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And so as you can see, it's, it's sold there. You can, it, it's, that is a, 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 what I so Can you just talk us through what that is? So, so like this is a um, it's a Sam. It's like a, I, I don't even know what year it is, but it's a vintage Samsung clicky keyboard, as you can see. <laughs> just check this out, guys, because this is the kind of thing that does yeah, excite. Like you. who would have thought? Like I knew. Like yeah. I've I've heard many people say there's made in Taiwan, so, or, yeah. right? I'm. Can you see them? All right, the picture. Yeah, what's the connect? What's the connection on it's it? An what's ATXT that? or something? I think it's called like a big. It's a big yeah. plug, and they got to get a. You know, so it's dusty. It's not even perfectly mint, like you know, because it's been sitting for since the eighties. It looks like or early nineties, whatever. I don't know, but, but I, I couldn't list it fast much? enough. What's that? How much it sell for in the end? Uh, hold on, let me bring that down. Um. I took an offer for 409, I think. Wow. Four, or 399, 399 and 999 shipping. So, but I don't know <laughs> why. Yeah, so yeah, $400 yeah. basically. I hate that it doesn't show you that on here. It shows you that it's sold, but it doesn't yeah. show you the exact yeah. price. Uh, that's pay. fine. I mean, just, yeah, I've just taken that off now, but just like yeah. that is the kind of thing that is just incredibly exciting because if you think about it, everyone knows about like the regular stuff, right? So, right. If, if, if it was like, um, do you know what I mean? Like everyone knows about like the, the more obvious electronics to look for. Like, right, if you, like you know, DVD combos and stuff yeah, like DVD that. Combos, like, you know, anything re like retro consoles, but that kind of thing. I mean, that is such a, you know, A, it's a Samsung, which, you know, it might, might be a good brand now, but certainly wasn't known as a good brand back in the nineties. Yeah. Tell. I think it was made by a company that was very big. If I, yeah. if, you know, there was like, you know, it's made in Taiwan. That's again normally a sign that something's not quality, <laughs> not during. Really? Like, really? Was I didn't even look. I well, didn't in even... the UK, we we kind of see it as you know, like made in Japan. Oh, it's made in China more. is like the yeah. Like we don't... yeah so made a made in Taiwan isn't always, but to see like a standard keyboard like that go, you know, obviously it's not completely standard. Um, it's you know like four four hundred dollars for that keyboard. It's incredible. Do you know what I mean? And and that's like mm -hmm. one of things that you got mm -hmm. and you paid like 500 for the whole lot the whole the whole five well 505 if you count the first five dollars yeah yeah okay 500 and so i have another tab um up i think it should be able to pull it up 
and these are the rest. This is all that I've, I have some that haven't sold yet, but I'll bring this up. These are like, um, so this guy, I, it's, I know it's stupid to see. I wonder how I can do this. If I can pull up the order without. So this guy paid $159.92 for four games. Wow. Right? So that's part of the deal. Now I have about five. I'll mm -hmm. remove that because it does have an address there, actually. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. no, he's a, he's a, but he's sending it overseas. It don't matter. Yeah, don't yeah but, okay, but <laughs> 150, I, just, just to be safe, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But $150, and that was just for the shareware games the as four, well. For the shareware. Yeah. And then he, um, so he bought actually two orders from me because he's a, he's what we call a freight forwarder here. Okay. And he, you send it to him, and, and then he, he sends it to whichever country that. Like I, I've, I've had that before, where people, um, especially with buyers in places like Japan and Russia and places like that, where they will, they, yeah, people buy through their website, and then they buy and yeah. Some, I don't know how it works. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Two like, big orders they so far. buy from normal eBay. They buy. They but no, the websites kind of host the eBay listings, as it were. Yeah, it's somehow. almost like a drop shipping type deal, yeah. I, I'm guessing. But um, yeah. the, the weird thing is, is that it ships to Oregon, uh, one of our states, but it goes international to Oregon, and I have not yet figured that out yet. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, how can it go international in the United States? Yeah, that is a bit weird. I'm blown away by it. So he's ordered twice, but you know, it between those and I, God, I can't even remember. Um, Oh, the 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 card the that I sold that was burned up that was fried. Uh, so a mother, like a video, it was a part of a computer, like a mother. Yeah, it was a computer. Right? Yeah, it was um or, or something for some old. Yeah, but again, like, what, like what was it for? Do you remember? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, it was uh, oh Jesus, a, uh, it was a bridge of some sort. I remember. For uh, <laughs> I know. I told you. I sent it to yeah. you. I was like, you will not believe this considering it was burnt up as it well was burned. Yeah. yeah you can clearly see the burns i put it in there look fried and this guy yeah. messaged me like just you know it, it sold within a day and i listed it sky high because i had no idea what it was worth right i had no idea i just saw one listed for 400 and one sold for i think 300 or something so within like three sales out of this haul by the way i just want to say a massive thank you to crazy daisy she's just super chatted 10 pounds crazy daryl the crazy daisy love oh. your content and the fun side as well for you and bex oh that's very kind of you crazy daisy. thank you so much uh mega kind of you um but like so out of your haul so far um you've sold what like three or four things that's more than put you in profit oh my god yeah the yeah. the keyboard and the board the motherboard alone is well you. over yeah well over and then I can't even tell you how many games I've sold already. I'm probably, I'm probably already, I'm just going to guess because I haven't had a time to do the math and I really don't do that until the end of the, like, I won't do that for a while. Let's put it that yeah. way. Until I'm probably well over a grand easily already. And I, I've not listed nearly a fraction of it, like not even close. And I think the interesting thing here is these are all things that aren't like your standard games. Like when Tommy's saying games here, he's not talking about he's not talking about games that look particularly valuable or anything. They wouldn't on the face of it. They're not going to be your normal Nintendo titles or Sega titles. No, titles they're floppy disks. Most people will now know to look for these things. Will look like really basic, you know, like uh, really cheap cardboard boxes. Uh, flimsy cardboard boxes with a couple of floppy disks in them, but there is a market for them. Um, I think people are becoming more aware of like PC big box games, especially the big titles. Um, you know, people know about Commodore Amiga games, Atari ST games, things like That's that. That's what it was, the, an Amiga. It was an Amiga board. It was That's an Amiga was. board. It was a board for a, yeah, a, a board for an Amiga. Yeah, that would definitely be sought after depending on what it is. And it's just like these kinds of items are always exciting because they're still out there. Um, and you know, you obviously have to have a little bit of luck to come across them. Um, uh, but obviously you, you were like aware enough to make the deal. You knew that there was going to be value in there. So you were happy to kind of make a strong offer. Yeah, I was well. nervous at first, you know, cause it was all real dusty and I, I and you know, I just, you just don't know what it's going to be when you're just looking at mounds and mounds of stuff. And I mean, 
I was nervous. I can't say I wasn't nervous that I was going to be sitting on this. It wasn't about the money as much as I'm already out of space and I was going to be yeah. sitting on it for a decade. Like, yeah, of course. I was just like, oh, God. You know, but I was blown away. And once I started actually doing real comps, I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. I, I, and um, this is quite interesting. Is this like the first time you've bought like that volume of stuff? Oh, no, no, no. Well, the video game store was more volume. Was it than bigger than volume? Did. Okay. Yeah, this wasn't a lot. This is, I mean, there's probably, I would say, like a thousand units total, maybe in here. Okay. It, and, I mean, which is big. No, but no, I, the reason why I'm asking that is because it's something that obviously I've been wrestling with myself with the RC stuff as well. Is have you got some kind of a strategy? So, like, when do you see yourself maybe getting sick of dealing with it? Are you going to have some kind of strategy where you're going to say, okay, I've done enough with this now. Now it's time for me to move my on. Or, or are you going to? Are you going to try to literally rinse every last penny out of it by by going through everything and listing everything? What's the that's that's for me interesting as well because it's well, yeah, yeah, and that's the thing I struggle with the most. Like I've I just I struggle huge with getting rid of junk and getting rid of stuff that's taking up space, not selling. Mm -hmm. um, I did change my business model a lot, like Tracy will tell you, and I've done. I instead of trying to hold out for every dollar, I just I, I had to make myself say, all right, this stuff's got to turn and burn. It's got to go. It's got to reinvest. I'd rather sell it and make 70% than hold on to it for six months to make 90 and reinvest it three or four times over, if that makes any sense. So, yeah. and anything, you know, I've watched a lot of, learned from a lot of people over the years, but your average listing, like your average, you know, listing price or average sale price really taking the buy-in out of it at this point it does the buy-in is the biggest part of the whole equation but your sales price dictates how how you can scale if you're stuck selling ten dollar items to scale as an individual is is immensely ridiculously yeah. hard it's just unthinkable there's, there's going to be a ceiling as to how much you can do oh By because way, just be for the I mere factor thank you to kent daigle sorry <laughs> kent daigle has just super chatted five dollars you want to see a badass store look at his store that dude's got like eighty five thousand dollars of retail arbitrage items listed it's sick it's yeah. really sick he's got a beautiful store but yeah, I think that's something that you have to kind of have a plan for because it's yeah. something I've definitely struggled with. You're saying you're struggling with. And I think it, it when you're buying like a large job lot of something, it can seem, it, you know, it, it is such a good deal. It can really boost your business. It, um, it can really give you a, a, mm -hmm. like a shot in the arm. But you have to know when it becomes too consuming, like in terms of space as well. Because you, you have space and like mental space and and just time headspace, yeah. Oh. Like for example, you've sold this this you know you've sold, you've ha had a few high ticket sales. Right. Realistically, how many more high ticket sales are you going to find in that in the rest of the job lot? I mean, is there I, a chance? I mean, well, here's the thing: I have two projects running side by side right now. I also bought a four wheeler uh, for eight hundred dollars and. Um, I'm disassembling it and putting the parts online and I sold the first part for 450, one part out of hundreds. So it's a, it's a rare like motor that was made in 87. They don't make it anymore. So I have that project running and I'm just kind of bouncing myself back and forth. So I don't burn myself out because I don't know about you, but I walk down here and, and there's sometimes I'll, I'll just stare at inventory for, what feels like hours, not knowing what to list, not knowing where to start. Because it's, it's so starting, right? All you have to do is start. Like, That's yeah, it. Just the volume of stock. And oh, yeah. you know that if you look at things individually, you'll be able to say, oh, that's got to be worth this much. I should just put that aside. All you need to do is like take five or 10 items, but you don't, you just, you get paralyzed. All the time, all yeah. the time. It happens every single day, every day. Until then what I had, then I have to like totally do something different for a day, like, like clean. Like I was last night, I cleaned for like hours and I didn't touch anything. Then today I come down and I, now I have like, you know, a pile of things that I can go ahead and list. It's weird. I just think I get, you get burnt out. I think in a way it's not, it don't feel like burnout, but I guess it really is. I don't know. And, and again, not to like drill down on this too much, but like this is on a haul that you could potentially say 
naturally you would have an affinity to like you enjoy vintage yeah. tech yeah and still and still paralyzed by something that i'm passionate yeah. about so if you can imagine if you exactly and that's something you're passionate about so when you're out there guys and you're looking to buy stuff it sounds really good because i remember when i've watched other um youtube channels and sellers pick up amazingly huge amounts of stuff yeah. there is still some fatigue involved with this like even lonnie like I remember Lonnie saying he didn't think Batman was all that or something. <laughs> like I bet he didn't feel that way before. No. He, well, and the thing is, we're all watching Lonnie, um, Lonnie buying all this amazing stuff, and we're all salivating and drooling like over. Right. This and he don't even care about stuff. it. And, and he's just probably he's probably like I just want this gone now. Get Batman a finger every day walking in the shed just with the Funko Pops, RVA flips, Funko Pops everywhere. It's like it becomes. You know, so even if it's something you have a passion for, you you, got, you have to be like, I'm, I, I don't want to preach about it, but I'm passionate about this because it's something that I'm struggling oh, yeah. with right now. Like, I yeah, love but, artsy stuff, but I'm like. When you get down to like, because I, I still have so much to comp, right? You know, and when you're fine, when you get into a rut of finding 10, $20 items, mm. they're harder to list. Yeah. It's easy to list a $50 item. It's yeah. easy to list a hundred dollar. Well, you know, pound for you. Yeah, I, it, I get what you mean. You find a 500 pound item, you're going to list it within minutes, right? You'll list it in the car. Don't you list it like keyboard mighty fast. <laughs> right. And and so that's the struggle you have to find if you don't buy anything that is not at whatever, whatever the minimum amount is that makes you want to list it right away. That should be your focus, right? To never buy below that amount. But who does it? No one does. No one does it that I know of. We all do it. Yeah. I think that's something that's really important to bear, you know, bear in mind, guys, because it's just like it's it seems so attractive, doesn't it? Like the whole oh, I'm gonna get a big haul oh, of something. Yeah, I'm and here right now. Why not pick this up too? I'm already here. Yeah, and and like Shazad says, Z has no patience. You need to watch your, you need to match your stock to your selling tactics. No point having long tail stock if your personality is more quick flip. Yeah. And to that end, um, to be fair, like that's why recently I've been focused so much on going out and buying the single items again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've still got RC parts by the bag full, and I'm like, I don't want to look at it. You know, I just, I, I'm, I, I really do feel like the stuff that I've, we've gotten through so much of it. And uh, we've gotten to a point and I'm wondering like, but the, the worry is you've got to make sure you go through all of it. Like you said, you're going to have to make sure you go through all of the stuff you've picked up there, Tommy, and you're going to have to make sure you comp oh, yeah. it all. Because but I don't know what's in there, honestly. I, exactly. I still have, have boxes. And boxes. In there. But once you know, and you find that you've listed the valuable stuff, like I think that's the point we're at. I think we've not, we know we've pretty much listed all the good stuff, mm -hmm. and we what's left now is like really slow, low value parts. And I'm like, I just want to get rid of that now. Um, right. And what I've been doing instead is been going out and feeding my need for like that quick flip, yeah. Like, like that says, and I've been going out and buying, like just just thrifting, like we all do, you know, going to charity shops and going to car boots and, and keeping an eye out on marketplaces to pick up stuff. And that's been really, it's been good for me mentally. Like, I mean, since like, how long has it been now since you actually picked up this haul? Uh, it's been probably a little over a month, at least, at least a month so and a half. Really early into it. And you're, you're already like thinking, I'm I'm already out of I was I I mean I was at Goodwill this morning you know I'm just like you know, <laughs> Goodwill already. I was at Goodwill this morning man I got look you know you want to see you yeah, look we got we got a video card look at that oh, so you <laughs> what's the chances that you go to Goodwill and you find more of something know, some vintage fry wingtips look at these there you oh, go those, okay fried yeah. boots are nice yeah oh, and then I um I got some and, fried boots and and then I found uh, some some games and. This game is not worth crap, but this one's sealed, right? Okay. It's yeah, sealed. Yes, the game sealed. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like probably, I don't know, $25, yeah. $30. So I spent $40. Oh, oh my God. Nick Hills would go nuts. I got a, I got a, a tub, a clear, like 20 liter tub filled with cassettes for $20. <laughs> Audio cassette. I just got a shout out. Just me, Kathy. She super chatted $4.99. Uh -huh. $5. Pretty mother, <laughs> so Aaron told me I just wanted to send a super chat. Hey guys, you really got to step it up in the U.S. because it's worth like half in the U.K. All right, we really got. <laughs> <No, it. laughs> I'm kidding. We appreciate the. Uh, we appreciate. Um, the thought. Really do appreciate it. Uh, um, but um, but you know who I really would love to have on sometime is Shazad. I've been talking to him like he's commenting on some videos. He's. I thought he was just an asshat, you know. 
he's got some knowledge, man. Yeah, and he's he's got a lot of knowledge. Yeah, and I, I want. I think I was like, dude, I, was, I he hasn't responded. He was messaging me back right away until I said we need to talk sometime. Then he ain't responding no more. <laughs> No, he's he's probably been busy. I mean, that's he, the dude, thing. He, I didn't I mean, he, realize he's, just, he's made another good point. I find that if you treat eBay as a business, then you list everything. Yep. But if you treat it like a hobby, then you're more likely to have a death pile. Yeah. And I think that's actually uh, something that we can all that we can all kind of take something from that comment there. Um, I, it's just I think we all do this because we want control, mm -hmm. like do the whole reselling thing as we want control. But the truth is, it's a business, right? It is, it is a business. And Walmart like, puts everything out on their shelves, right? Yeah, especially when we're sitting here and we're talking about how like tough things have been, mm -hmm. how you know how much of a battle it's been in terms of the consistency of sales recently, yet we still have certain ideas about business which aren't really that I suppose professional is the wrong word for it, but you know what I mean? Like th there are things that we should, you should be swallowing that frog as people say. Yeah. But okay. I, and here's the thing. Here's what I have to remind myself when, when I get into that rut. Cause I do that. I say, man, I'm, 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 I could do so much better. I could do so much better. But if you think about it, well, the only places that really have everything listed clean out on the stock or like, like people who do FBA, like, or like Shazad really just buys and sells. He just he don't he don't have the same type of inventory where he has to clean it, polish it, test it. You know, so I understand his logic. Yeah, I would have everything out too if I had a thousand of one item or you know whatever he does, and that's you know brilliant because he has that connection. But you think that all the stores like I don't know you go there, but we call them like mom and pop stores, like brick and mortar. You know, mm. if you go into any of those little stores that are running for themselves, they're all disheveled all the time. Like they're always have a back stock. They always have like, you know, just piles of stuff sitting. Around. So that's the only thing I have to remind myself. I think everyone's that way, unless you have I a certain. That's, that's actually a really good point. When I first moved up here, one of my first, like, um, I got like a nice retro hi-fi haul as well. And it was mm -hmm. actually a local guy that was shutting down his shop. He'd had for 30 plus years. And this guy had like an Aladdin's cave upstairs. He could have sold it himself, but it, like you said, mm -hmm. it was, because it, it was his passion to like, you know, uh, deal with AV and hi-fi and electronics and he used to like fixing stuff. Up, he had better stock in his stock room than he had out on the shelves. Isn't that amazing? He'd gotten into like a habit where he was just, like, he'd kept the best stuff for himself. I mean, we found eight track players like Tascams up there. We found like, like new old stock uh we, we had high-end hi-fi all tucked away upstairs and it was it, i i completely agree with that point you made there actually that it's it's right that what shazad says is completely right that you should treat it you know as a business it's just stock it's an asset in your business it needs to be for sale but i think the way that we go out we, <laughs> the way you go out and you you the whole process of it like even the way you find a job lot it's not done in a clinical manner it's not just you know you're not just calling your wholesale contact and getting it shipped mm -hmm. pallet towards you you're going to some guy you're getting his story you're talking to him you're right, right. Him, and it, and it's all adding to the emotion right. of it and yeah. when you bring that home it's coming home with that emotion right and you're you getting know, you, you kind of have a different bond to it you don't want to yeah. just like whenever i buy like like retail arbitrage so like walmart has some crazy clearances right now so i picked up some stuff when i was there i don't care about it i have no i don't even i don't, I don't care you know anything about it at all but there's something about these fry wingtip shoes that i just picked up literally no and i'm not joking i already have like i'm gonna polish them i'm gonna take the time to get in and why though i don't know why it's just weird like so i Shazad's business model is probably more brilliant, right? It's oh yeah. Speaking of boots, got some Harley. No, they're Loblan. Oh, is that um, is that Lob like L O B L A N Loblan? Or what Lob is the one that Ronnie always talks about? It's something Lob. It's just it's no, that's Lob. John Lob. Those are completely. Okay. That's, that's like a that's another uh, ball game. John Lob is very high end footwear, like handmade. But the, these are like um, made in Venezuela, but they're quite good. Really? Uh, yeah, brand new. These sell for like 170. How wow. would you get uh, for those? I paid. I got two pairs for 35. So 35? Yeah. 
So, so you could probably sell them for like a hundred a piece when you clean them up. Probably with with offers, I'll probably take like seventy or something. Wow, really. that's awesome. But yeah, I know what you mean. That's the kind of thing you get into, and it's just, it. I think it's there is a, a balance because you do have yeah. to treat it like a business, but you do have to. Well, and, and I'm not taking anything away from Zahir's business model at all because it's brilliant, and it takes a lot of work to get those connections. Yeah, I mean, who did I say? So here, <laughs> well, you had a brilliant one in the beginning too. I did have, but now it's not, yeah. not so much. Is that I meant because it does take a lot of work to get those wholesale. You can't just Google wholesaler because those people that no. come up are going to be shades. You know, yeah. they're going <laughs> to go buy from them. And you're going to be out of business. It's not easy to find a wholesaler. I've tried, and it's like really hard to find the proper ones. But um, there's something about taking a, a ten dollar item to make two hundred, or a hundred, or you know. I don't get the same passion out of taking a ten dollar item to make fourteen. Yeah, you, you know, even though it's faster, it may be easier and cleaner. I just don't have the same idea. You know. Yeah, there are some funny comments coming in. Rod is in the chat. He says um, they will look great with your cheeky chaps. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I'm not going to rock those boots, Pleasant Valley. Um, Shazad says you need too much money on the table. I'm I'm taking offers. You know, yeah. time hard, oh, Shazad. But, it, but the thing is, it's like Shazad does the same thing. He turns it over as fast as possible, right? Hmm. He could mark all of his million items up a dollar more and sit on them for 12 months and make more money, right? But he won't do it. Yeah. What? Well, why would he? Because he's. Yeah. It's a. It's a numbers. It's like turnover. Turn the, the game's called turnover, right? It's yeah. not sit over. It's not pile over. It's turnover. And that's yeah. what we fall into. We fall into like but it's at least you're honest enough to recognize that, you know, like I think that's the thing. At least you're calling it what it is. It's uh, we all do suffer, you know, from that where we will, you know, we we want to we need to turn over just as much as, as someone like Shazad. But we're doing it with completely different inventory. Right, right. Like, right. That's the key, isn't it? So we're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with limited time. Like, you know, we've got one off items that if we sell, you need to replenish that. We don't have, mm -hmm. a, you know, a lot of resellers don't have a lot of replenishables. Right. I'm not sitting in a sauna with my bathrobe and a cigar like Suzette ordering like an ordering 12 pallets. You know what I mean? I'm going so, to the gym, Zaheer. I'm going to the gym. Yeah, we're to the gym while ordering yeah, another. Where's the gym? I don't even know how to spell gym. Yeah. He's there every day. We can't, we, we can't. Yeah, we, we have a very different situation. I think like I got a taste of it with the RC stuff, mm -hmm. but I quickly realized I don't have the pockets to continue it. No, yeah, that's the situation. And, and I think it's just gotten me to to kind of go back to, you know, going back to mm -hmm. the standard way of sorting. I don't know if you know Steampunk Town, but you should look at his business model. It's very fascinating. He's He disappeared for a while, but he's back. They, oh, do, only, you, they do only steampunk. You know okay. what steampunk is? The, the yeah, old... yeah, yeah. My daughter loves it. She, like, buys That's those weird spikes, spikes coming out, and my whole business model is on turnover. So yeah, and, and his stuff is rare, and he could probably command a lot more money by sitting on it, but... Even someone selling rare stuff is telling you they're doing it on turnover, right? Yeah. I mean, that tells you something right there. That was a perfect like person to look up and see because if he's doing that with that kind of stuff, there's no reason we shouldn't be doing it with thrift store or charity shop stuff. Like honestly, like well, that's, that's part of my thinking. When when someone makes me a decent offer, I'm more than likely to accept it because I'm that's how I'm thinking now, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm getting that buzz out of it, and it's more importantly, it allows you to get your money out and hopefully reinvest in something better and better. I mean, but that's where I have that conflict because on one side you've got that, but then on the other mm -hmm. side, you do have that conflict of, you know, how long do you hold on to, you know, the long tail stuff that, you know, by its nature is long tail. Do you ever wonder, like, do you ever have that thought that I don't want to sell all this stuff because I'm afraid I won't find more? Possibly. You, I think that plays into it because you don't yeah. know where the next haul is coming yeah. from whether you're ever going to get a haul that's as good as that because so, that's why i'm trickling this out like i'm just like how long is it going to be before i find more and i'm trickling it out just in mixing it in between other listings your normal pickups and you know, yeah and in a way i wish that's what we had done we went hard on it we like beck and i literally were just you know in the living room everything was just dumped out and we listed so much in the beginning but all we did was list this stuff because we had to though because we had no space we were like living in 
awesome pot. So it was See, kind yeah. of crazy. I spent forty three dollars today at the thrift store, right? And look what Shazad spent sixty seven hundred pounds. I just got a two thousand of a single skew <laughs> with sixty three pounds. Uh, wow, great yeah. to learn FBA. Yeah, right. Yeah, that is an expensive less than 6700 plus VAT. Well, you know, I spent 35 on those boots and I had to double take, you know. know right? right. <laughs> and you had to think about it, right, man? Am I going to get a kebab tomorrow? <laughs> you know, I was, it was touch and go for a moment, you know. I had to, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully McDonald's is doing a two for two, right? <laughs> Z, large pants, small pockets. I don't know what you mean by that pleasant valley, but I'll just accept it. Um BCP's actually put Stump Steampunk Towns channel in the chat. By the way, guys, I'm sorry if I've missed a lot of comments. That I, I see they've been coming in. We've got over 130 people watching, which is lovely. Oh BCP has been dropping links of channels in. Um, make sure, guys, if you want to follow Tommy, that you click on the link in the description, and I'm sure BCP will put Tommy's chat in the channel uh, in the cha chat channel in the <laughs> chat. Okay, that way around. Um, because honestly, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he's, he's a lot of fun. He gets together with um, uniquely me. They're, they're like some kind of a transformer that joins. And yeah, it's weird. It's totally <laughs> like, it, it, I don't know, if you watch her daytime show, and then you, it, when I met her, and then I met her after dark. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, it's, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tracy is unbelievable, like unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. It's to hide when it comes it, to it, it, It's like, it, it's brilliant though. It's like, uh, I've always yeah. heard people have split personalities, but Jesus. Really, yeah, really entertaining. Tommy, by the way, guys, Tommy is also a bit more Tommy on his channel. I think he's tried to tone it down for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, to keep you on a, on a, on a kind I get passionate, of man. I get, I, I, I got to reel that in. I get really I wrapped up in. Let's go at eBay. Let's go let's at eBay. Go. eBay let's fucking go. blows, man. There we go. <laughs> let's go for it. Let's go. We've got we've got about ten minutes left, so let's just go for it. Let's let's talk about. Okay, I want to play devil's advocate with you. Okay, right? go ahead. You, you're you've got a lot of reasons why you think eBay is being unfair. Then I've been saying this for a long time. Advocate, and then how come people like Shazad and not just Shazad? There are others. There are people I follow on Instagram. Um, there's a lady called Mandy. She's always flipping. She does. She just thrifts clothes, right? Mm -hmm. She just goes out and thrifts clothes from charity shops. She right. constant. She's crushing it as well. She weathers the storm. Why is it? It seems like some people weather the storm and some can't. Because, you, okay. Well, here's my first answer. My first answer is go. On, go let go. me see your books. That's my answer always because I know I'm in the U.S. We have the most, the most snake oil salesmen youtubers that exist and they all are killing it every one of them when really they're not um shazad is probably leaving half 50 percent profit on the table by not selling on amazon i'm just throwing it out there honestly just being honest amazon generally sells way higher in the u.s I, i'm and that's u.s if he wasn't in the uk even in the uk i think he would he would crush yeah. it so it's and the clothing lady is she selling four dollar clothes ten dollar clothes twenty dollars no, she's 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 doing well. she does chef she does well from what we can see, and she I'm for, I've got no reason to doubt she's right okay. So, just, so it, well, does she, she have two thousand items listed? Storm. Not pun. Does she have like two thousand items listed? Probably about okay. that. Yeah. Then you know, and she should be selling like twenty plus a day, right? Yeah, well, she, I think she does do quite, yeah. quite well. Yeah. Then she's doing. She's one of the rare because that's what I look at. I see all these people that say they're killing it, killing it, and killing it, but I. Then you ask them, I got 6,000 items listed. Well, you're only selling 15 a day. You should be selling 60. You're not killing it at all. It should be a 1% plus rule, right? It's always yeah. a one, over. You don't want to be less there than 1%. There are always outliers. I can give you that. There are always yeah. outliers. There's always going to be people that are going to pop up and say, I'm doing really well. So I mm -hmm. can appreciate that. But like, how much of it do you, how much of the responsibility do you just shirk off onto the platform versus? Right now, with what yeah. I'm seeing, I think eBay has is failing miserably it, it, totally their payment system is down like you know they're people weeks behind getting their payments for managed payments paypal said that their their ebay sales are down three percent um three percent don't sound like a lot but in the grand scheme of things it's a lot ebay is going to announce the first loss on q4 mind you they're going to announce a loss in q4 guaranteed for the first time in four years, any quarter they've taken a loss in, but in, and it's going to be in Q4. What's that tell you? Their Q3 was flat. 
no three percent down. Their their only way they even made close to numbers was because of promoted listings. But that's just robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's just coming out of your already shrinking base, right? So you're just taking that out of the seller, which is all you have left because you're not there. No more buyers came in. We don't. There's not. They're not doing anything to get the the younger generation. You ask any of your daughters, they don't know what eBay is, probably. Yeah, they only because you were do it, but they probably yeah. wouldn't. They don't go in it to buy stuff, right? No, it's not something. That it's Amazon, works. right? It's all Amazon or Depop or one of the younger generation. eBay totally. And what I try to explain to people, people keep telling me, no, it's everyone says that all the time, all the time, all the time. Yeah, but that time has come now because eBay has proven they're not going after the younger generation. You look at your demographics on YouTube. That tells you the whole picture. 45 and above for the most part is your demographics who are interested in anything to do with eBay. And you take that and you figure out how long so you're, they you're taking quite a, a longer term grim view of generally it's like a a decline, like a slow decline happening in your opinion. Yeah, and I think once the baby boomer generation is gone, so is eBay. Unless they do something drastic and stop trying to pull from the sellers instead of bringing in buyers. I mean, their whole conference call again is based on their increase in revenue is going to come from the sellers. If they said it last time, they did it. They said it this time, right? I mean, what does that tell you? That is a bad deal. Anywhere you go, when you tell us point blank to our face, your increase, you're going to make more money by feeing us, not by bringing in more sales, right? Yeah, I just wanted to shout out there. DBG's come in and says, yeah, Mandy's amazing. She sits around 2,000 listings. She does get 20 to 24 pound each item. She's not an, uh, not a smoke blower in the slightest. One of the hardest workers I know. See, yeah, I mean, uh, and um, Darren says Mandy's one of the most consistent nice. sellers ever. So I suppose, yeah, yeah, and I don't know her at all. So I, I'm just saying that's how I would look at it in the United that's States. How you would, that's how you, if you were, if you were questioning, yeah, yeah, definitely. it's because and, be in mind that obviously you you've got a bit of um, how shall I put it? You you're a bit careful about people. Be, yeah. Being, States. Well, only because I got burned so bad in the beginning with the people I watched that I realized and people I, and it drives me batty when I come to the UK or to Australia and people are watching these people that don't even sell on eBay but claim to or you find their store and it's not worth $12 the whole store and it's it's so yeah. frustrating I think that's, that's, that's another thing I suppose with like someone like Mandy she's busy working she doesn't do YouTube <laughs> well that's the whole thing the best yeah. sellers we don't even know right we don't even know them because they're too busy yeah. to be on YouTube yeah, very good point. Is it? We don't know. It's us, it's, um, right? <laughs> but but even Shazad told me something yeah. very that I've heard from many people. Mm. He believes there's a ceiling cap on every person how much you're allowed to sell. He cannot break a certain amount. He he told I think he said he had four days in a row of the same exact dollar amount. It won't go any higher. Um, that's pretty alarming, really. If if Shazad should be it able is, to, turn but I think you've got. You know what? I just feel that there's. There's gonna be some truth to what you said, no doubt. But you have to temper it with, just for your attitude's sake, just for mm -hmm. your mindset's sake. That you've got to tell yourself that you do have some control. Otherwise, you're just gonna get depressed. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I, I feel that there is that danger that if if we get too into the um into the downside of it, it can easily feel like you know you're just not you're never gonna kind of have enough control over your own business and. Mm -hmm. and as, as someone that's running your own business, yeah. that's the ultimate. Yeah. Item, hasn't it? And you know, and then with the fees, like we can't, I can't, we can't even read our bill. Like I can't even make sense out of it. I don't know how someone can do it. Like Shazad, um, I don't even know how you could read it. How can you do? You, can you make sense out of your bill? Uh, I don't know. All I know is that the percentage <laughs> of my bill <laughs> is going up. Versus right. like, it, I, I, about a year ago, it was regularly 12 to 14 percent. Now it's gone as high as 18 percent of my sales are eBay. Yeah. Um, obviously, some of that is going to be down to the uh, promoted listings, you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. the, the pay, but God knows how the rest of it. But there's, you know, also there's there's so many hidden things in there. Like um, if you if they deem you underperforming compared to other people in your category, which they will never tell you who they are or what category it is. They can charge you a 4% surcharge at any given time. That's right. Yeah. That, that was one of the new um, updates, wasn't it? Where yeah, How, And they can't tell you who they're comparing you to. No. And then also another thing people look at, they're like, you're, you know, you're up 12% over last month, right? You know what, you know where it shows you that in the seller hub. Yeah. yeah. If you look underneath of that, 
in fine print, it says in this, in this category, in this category. Yeah, not yeah. Even things that I sell. So how can I be up? Like it's like blouses and turtle shells or something, you know, it's like, it, it's so ridiculous. Um, just want to say, yeah, BCP is putting um, her, her Instagram. She's always flipping. Is Mandy on Instagram? Yeah, she's, she's always great. flipping. She, yeah, she's always she's awesome. she's great. Like, yeah, she and she is. She is always. I have to um, check her out. And um, Shazad says, "I have an accountant for that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course he's he does. Shazad's like an astana. He can't be worried about that stuff. He's yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome <laughs> zero being Shazad percentage wise is it, man? UK on what planet, <laughs> man? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we might have more ROI, but he, yeah. shoo, God, <laughs> it's, that dude kills it. I would love to, like, even if he didn't want to be on camera, just to pick his brain one day. Wouldn't you like to do that? Would you? I, I would, but I've spoken to him, and he's he's actually a very helpful guy. So, like, I've actually asked him questions, and you know, like, he, he's given me advice, and I've talked to him, and he's he's a pretty cool, cool guy. Yeah, um, but I think he's he likes. Busy. Yeah, he's, he's he's too busy for this, man. He, 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 we're lucky that we get a couple of comments in the chat and updates of how his sales are going. I think um, he works for eBay and he's lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, T Keck says, "Nope, can't make sense of my bill. Um, it feels about right. That's about as far yeah. as I go." And Tracy says, "Tommy sells mostly turtle shells." And Shazam said, "Anytime, Tommy. Look at that. Whoa." <laughs> Oh, there you go. There you go. I would love that. I want you on there too because he loves to rouse you. I mean, he loves to get. So he was on here talking about how bad his week was. Because that's the whole to the gym. There you go. They couldn't afford. <laughs> eBay couldn't afford him, man. Right. Yeah. And it is, and yeah. I um I have someone really cool coming on soon. He's going to be under anonymity, but I oh, okay. um he's very very he's followed by all the major newspapers in in the U.S. and he does nothing but hold eBay accountable on Twitter all day. Really. Okay. And um, he has some very good inside information. Very, like, very, very good information. And when is this happening? Well, I'm told, I was talking to him today. He's trying to figure out his schedule. So whenever he's off, well, if, if you want to catch that, guys, if you want to catch Tommy in action on his own turf, on his channel, uh, please go over and show Tommy some support. He's a great guy, honestly. Uh, enjoy. I I've been hooked watching you and Tracy. <laughs> oh, and, you know, Beck is hooked. You guys are bring. We you love Beck. Be prepared for some like, like you know flowery language. I think. I could yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're very, if you're um sensitive at all to anything in the world, the, the it could be anything. Be, some some would call them crass, Tommy. What's that? Crass. Some people would call them crass. I don't know what that means, but yes, Crass, with it. like like really forward, like really, really you know? raw. Yeah, really, yeah, if you've heard of Howard Stern, I like I told Tracy before we did it, like I wanted to take Howard Stern and eBay and have a baby. Yeah, it could even border on tasteless, but yeah, it's, uh, it's but, like white trash at its finest in America. No, it's not white trash. At all. Honestly, guys, check out Tommy's channel. He is absolutely amazing. Um, oh god! Oh, Whoa! Holy. God, David's reselling journey. Damn, David a... has super chatted fifty pounds. Jesus, great show, guys! Thanks for sharing. Let's get Tommy to a thousand subscribers. Bloody hell, David! Uh, oh my god! <laughs> thank you so much. That is very, That's very welcome, awesome, David. Um, and now, come on, you have to get Tommy to. Uh, uh, no. to I want time for the free. Oh, we got the trolls, do Mandry in the house. Oh the, yes, so my the hammer and spanner. Where's the spanner? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of quotes. I only watch Tommy for the free. <laughs> there's more to it than the free. Yeah, and and, and I don't mind talking about eBay, but I feel like everyone hears it all day, and so we just want to kind of chill out. And but we, I love eBay. I'm passionate, as you can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I love talking about eBay. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I hope this chat wasn't too heavily on. It. We only knocked eBay at the very end. It was more to introduce you to to the UK in a more formal way, and and to share like you know the pretty amazing hauls you've picked up in a very short period of time. I mean, hopefully that came across uh, to Seven you guys. Away. I was just at eight fifty. How the hell did that happen? I don't know. Jesus. Don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm feeling a little tingly down below right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, you can talk about that on your channel. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, here, Gonaz Palette Company right here. <laughs> What's he said? That's uh, good. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah. He had a uh, t-shirt. He said he did a, like a marathon. So I made t-shirts that says, Gonaz, go. 
<laughs> Z, apart from BCP, where are your spanners? Says Hitman. You is you know what? Is it just me that doesn't have a lot of moderators? Yeah, you're the only one that doesn't have spanners. It, it's not personal. Oh, I, crazy! You'd stop lying. It's not per. It's not a personal thing. I think I just. I don't know, man. I just. It just doesn't. I, I can mod people if you'd like. I just. I don't know if it's. Oh. Did you have those spanners? I mean, I made every single person a spanner because I knew I was going to get trolled to death and back. Okay. No, I don't know. I just, yeah, I just go with it. I think what I'll do is I, I, it makes it more, um, I don't know, maybe it makes it a bit more like, oh, wow. Well, you, know? you know, and I've said this many times, like, you don't get the hate because you're too good of a person. Nobody, what can they say about you? I mean, well, what can oh, someone come in here and say about you? We've had some, we've had some in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know yes. that was right in the beginning, though, right? Like you just had yeah, that one right day. early on, early days. It was and didn't bother you, and they stopped. Well, we get it like daily. We it's so crazy yeah. over there. You've seen some of those small glimpses of what happens over there. Yeah, and I have. Even Stu was of what, like, I've, like I've it just to, stupid. To, yeah, I've got to say, it, you guys are, give a great, great representation of U.S. Um, resellers, and you know, like I think you guys are. <laughs> Yeah, just just nice guys, really. Um, well, even our spanners have plenty to say about Z. <laughs> there you oh go. <laughs> there you well, go. It's like it's all. It's kind of like who you grow up with, right? Like I found, oh, yeah. I got lucky Darren, and found the right people. The channel, and he's been creating content himself for absolutely ages. Who's that? Uh, check it, Darren, smart reselling in the chat. He check him out as well. He's a really nice guy. Okay, I haven't found him yet. That's cool. He's, he, he, he he went away for a little while when he was like he's been busy doing a lot of house stuff and. You know, like moving, and it, so it's kind of taken him out. But I think he's going to be hopefully doing videos again soon. He's he's been he's been on the UK reselling YouTube scene for a long, long time. Um, I noticed Jazz was in the chat as well. Thanks, yeah, for Jazz. Yeah, yeah, the Brad. hottest part of the two Aussie thrifters. Yep, yep, and and Brad as well. Thank you for popping in. Um, really appreciate everyone popping in today. Um, <laughs> it, it's been a great chat. I think Tommy has been absolutely fantastic as well. Um, thanks for sharing what you picked up. Um, even amongst all the chat, I hope people enjoyed that. And if you've got any questions, you're more than welcome to put them in. But Tommy is probably going to be live tonight as well. I'm not sure or not. Yeah, because now I feel all pent up. Like I had to squeeze so much, like one breath yeah. into an hour. Because we're going to go for like seven hours, right? So like you know, an hour is like I just got like three sentences out and we're over. <laughs> yeah, normally Tommy and Tracy can. Can go for a long, she long stop time. Talking, man, she just don't stop. Oh, she doesn't. Stop. <laughs> I blame her for everything. Yeah, um, yeah, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we're gonna probably call it call it a night. It has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate everyone turning up. Um, I'll be loitering if Tom and Tracy go live. Says, look, yeah. mom, I'm And David um, also, like he says, he's gonna be live tomorrow. I would love to be there, David. Yeah, if you just know, use the words pent up. What, what did David say? Oh, yeah. Tommy, I will be live tomorrow, so you're more than welcome to join. Yes, David's reselling journey. David will be doing a uh, quiz tomorrow um, around 7 or 8 o'clock, I think it is. Um, mm -hmm. We um, So, yeah, hopefully we'll be on just after or before. You know what's missing? There's not an international Facebook group, is there? We need a one where we can all be a part of. Really? That sounds like a nightmare, Tommy. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Because it's so hard to catch up with. Well, Facebook, yeah, I guess. Facebook is bad, honestly. Does ads come back on you your channel? I don't that, know. Has ads stopped talking yet? Because he was still talking when I left. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But like, it's, it's seriously like, what? Can you imagine an international Facebook group? But I mean, just more for like, I don't know, for for just, just network. Not, yeah, for networking, like because it's so hard. It like, to you know what, isn't it? If you did, you'd have to literally iron fist rule it, like yeah, iron. Yeah. I like I, I I used to be of the opinion when it comes to like um Facebook groups that you have to be careful and moderate gently and whatever. No, no, no. If I I would never do one, um really unless Andrew said he's got it covered, don't worry about it. Andrew's got it covered. There you go. Yeah, money Facebook group. Okay, oh, I have an international Facebook group. I run it. <laughs> um right. yeah, you always yeah. join Andrew's Facebook group. Um, I enjoy it anytime I see Andrew alive still. If He's I ever did, I would completely just be iron fist though. Like yeah. anyone just breathed wrongly, they'd be out. Like, well, and it's like all the all of I guess that you're right because we our biggest one disappeared. Your biggest one disappeared. Pun? Your our biggest Facebook group, uh, Lonnie and John's, they took it down. It's yeah. not worth the headache. Yeah, that's what they said. It's just too much. Down you know? as well because it's not worth the headache. It's and just Nick took his down. It's I yeah. guess you're right. You probably have a good point. Why has it? The only way you could make it run is if you literally just 
iron fist and uh, and that would make it no f that would just make it no <laughs> fun this could be a whole show right here ned wants a channel name <laughs> what <laughs> two nads two nads youtube journey <laughs> 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 oh, there's so many nads. You, I would love to just come on and just bring, have put out names all night for that. That would be brilliant. Could you imagine? <laughs> Loads of fun watching nads every night, wouldn't it? <laughs> be, uh, uh, we believe you, Z. That's why you have no spanners. No, I have got spanners. I'll, I will add more. I will add more. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do tryouts or something. Yeah. I guess <laughs> I was just thinking out loud because it's so hard to just keep track of everyone. You know, now that we've kind of brought a little like worldly community together we're trying to and that's I, I love that i love seeing all of you guys i watch more uk and australia than i do us by a hundred fold now honestly i mean it's no joke i i don't watch hardly any us in the morning i do when you guys are still asleep and then yeah. after that it's the rest or when they're asleep sorry yeah well all right guys I'm going to call it a night. Thank you, Tommy, for joining us. Mm -hmm. Again, a massive thank you to everyone that's joined us. A massive thank you to everyone that's super chatted. David has completely, um, you know, just blown me away again. 50 pounds super chat. I just think that's unbelievably generous. Can anyone beat David? Come on. No, no, no. We're not <laughs> playing those games. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Tracy said Beck will be on my channel on Saturday. What? That is completely right. Yes. Rebecca is going to be drinking and hanging with tracy on awesome. saturday night drinking. yeah she, she uh, she's you know what if you get her drunk oh, seriously oh. she's she's funny we might carry that over to my channel then it yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you for watching i appreciate it very much oh, um, thank you guys uh, remember subscribe to tommy link is in the description uh it's well worth it thanks for watching guys That's so awesome okay.